numbers. Uh, here are some pictures. Just I thought I will put those pictures to make it a little bit colorful rather than just getting into the numbers. We have this uh, Royal Bengal Tiger, then we have the Bison, Sloth Bear, Shekru or uh, Giant Squirrel and the Dole. Uh, when we talk about the biodiversity status of India, that also has to be understood so that we know how precious these regions are for us. According to IUCN, India is a mega diverse country as we already mentioned and mega endemic regions are there with only 2.4% of the world's land area. That means we have abundance also of the species and also variety of species. With about 6 to 8% of all recorded species of the world, with 91,000 animal species, 6% of the world animals we have, and with 45,000 of plant species, we have 7% of the world total. And out of which 33% are endemic in nature. I'm repeating the endemic word again because that is what is the real precious thing. Now, once we understand a little bit about the numbers, let us understand the biodiversity at three different levels. In a simple word, because I said in the beginning that I have tried to keep this entire presentation at much uh, sim simplified way. Uh, species diversity is defined as number and abundance of different species that occur in an area. So we have uh, abundance and the number of different species. As you can see in the diagram or the photograph, there are some fruits and vegetables and on the other side, you have several different species of animals. So we have abundance of species and also the number of species which are also uh, varied. This second level of biodiversity, very important to understand, we call it as a genetic diversity. Uh, by genetic diversity, it is the amount of variation in the genetic material within a species or within a population. And this is what makes uh, the larger gene pool because there are genetic variations. And these genetic variations help these species to adapt to the environment. And as you have large number of genes because of the variation in the genetic material, that whole uh, bunch of genes can act as a raw material for the natural selection to act because from this only the genes which are useful for the survival for the next generation are selected. So actually this genetic diversity leads towards the evolution and this evolution subsequently will lead to the formation of new species. The third level of biodiversity is ecosystem diversity. It is the variation in the ecosystems found in the region or the variation in ecosystems over the whole planet. It includes microclimate, soil, topography, trophic. What I want to convey to you by this ecosystem diversity is any small micro habitat Will, occupy, will be occupied by, which will be a micro niche again for a particular specific species. So as we have many number of, because why we have this ecosystem diversity? Because we have, uh, there are 10 different uh, habitat biogeographical regions in India because we have a variety of habitat. And that is the reason why it makes it abundance of several microclimates and micro niches. And niche is the one which will be occupied by a particular species because it will be, it, that species has mastered that habitat. And that is why we have this variation in the species. I hope I have made it simple for the species diversity, genetic diversity and ecosystem diversity. What all this amounts to is that we have uh, diversity tremendous diversity of animals or animal species and the plant species or living beings for that matter. Then I thought once we understand what is biodiversity's importance, the levels of biodiversity, I thought I will take across these two concepts 
I don't know whether to call them as concepts or not, but just two points I want to take across. Number one is ecological debt day. And second one is urban biodiversity, since we all are living in urban areas. Now, ecological dead day is the one which, is, which started somewhere in 1987. And uh, it is the day which is calculated on the basis of how much resources uh, of the planet we have consumed as against the capacity of the earth or the planet earth to replenish those. I will continue with the ecological dead day just two minutes and we'll proceed further because probably I'm so ecological dead day for 2020 is not we are overdrawing our natural resources and we are borrowing it from the next year. That should be stopped. Probably this year, because of this corona thing, maybe three months, may from July, not towards the January, but towards the December. Let us hope so. The second one is urban biodiversity. It is the diversity of life forms in urban areas. Um, urbanization refers to the population shift from rural to urban areas. The most important point in here is human, it is a human induced environmental change that has to be linked with urbanization. And it is a human centric ecosystem. And that is why I also personally feel that this whole idea of ecosystem, uh, I mean, the urban ecosystem started uh, maybe in 1970s or so. So we have to, when we talk about the biodiversity of urban region, we have to uh, think in terms of the entire urban biodiversity rather than only talking about the biodiversity of a particular region. Because urbanization brings about drastic changes. I'm reading for you. Landscape, destruction of natural ecosystem, increase in demand for natural resources, causes pollution, changes land use pattern, and also brings about loss of biodiversity and alters hydrogeomorphology. So all, all these things are due to human-centric ecosystem. So what is required? By, because by 2030, 40% of the world population will be living in cities. So with urban ecosystem concept, what it says, it is not enough for the cities to plant a million trees, have background backyard gardens, or build green roofs and smart streets, the trees, shrubs, flowers in the green infrastructure also need to benefit birds, butterflies, and other animals. In, in short, in simple words, we have to create a mini urban ecosystem wherever we make plantation. That is what I believe in. That suppose you want to plant some 30 plants, then also divide those 30 plants. I mean, provided you have the place available, then you divide it into some few, three, four grasses, uh, some few herbs, some smaller shrubs, then the little larger shrubs, and then trees. That will create the entire ecosystem. And in a larger area, definitely, we have to look at the biodiversity um, in terms of entire urban ecosystem. Well, these are the biological diversity. I just wanted to show the, the few photographs I have just picked up and uh, put it here some Ceropegia and then the Gloriosa and then the Caspatar and then some few animals. That is what is the biodiversity. Now we come to the today's uh, uh, 22nd May as a uh, biodiversity day. United Nations decade of biodiversity was from 2011 to 2020. Thus it is the time to review what has happened to that biodiversity on the planet. And the United Nations has proclaimed May 22 as the International Day of Biological Diversity to increase understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues. It started since 2002. And as you all know, we have, we, have, we have written it in the title itself of the talk that the theme for 2020 is our solutions are in nature. Now, when we say our solutions are in nature, we also need to understand in a clear way what we understand by nature. 
and also what are the problems first in first place we have to we have to accept that we have the problems anyway so if you lose relationship with nature you lose relationship with humanity what is nature it is just simple words i have used here nature is the solitary tree in the field meadows and the groves squirrel ant and bee all the living things on the earth the rivers the mountains valleys ranges of hills so on and so forth so entire universe is nature and it is this nature we need to conserve so now it is the time for realization if we go through the themes right from 2002 till date what do we find we have started realizing the importance of nature and are trying to respect and connect with nature as we say our solutions are in nature provided we respect and take care of nature then only we will find the solutions in nature otherwise not also the problems we have to understand that these problems are created by us i have just given some themes right from 2002 to 2020 2020 as you can read our solutions are in nature and then if you see the from 10 to 20 biodiversity and forest biodiversity and marine i mean marine biodiversity water and biodiversity island biodiversity so we want to connect now biodiversity with our resources and so we have realized that everything that we need we will have the answers in nature so these are the themes i just thought i will give the theme so that the realization for the human being can be very evident now as we are saying that uh, solutions are in nature what are our problems this is also very simple probably each one of you can draw a list like this as our problems like logging mining road building in remote places dam building irrigation coastal development rapid urbanization population growth and all lead to biodiversity loss including fire such as what we had amazon blazes last year so everything is leading towards biodiversity we also have problems like alteration of land use pollution of air water soil oceans rivers depletion due to exploitation of natural resources loss of forests actually you can read through and you all are probably familiar with these problems but all this has what what it has led to it has led to so all these resources are either we have polluted contaminated or exhausted that is what is our problem and now we are trying to find the solutions in nature nevertheless it is never ever late now how where do we find the solutions when we say we find the solutions in nature where do we find it nature has provided us numerous gifts such as air water land sunlight minerals plants and animals and as far as the biodiversity is concerned it can be taken as one of the ecosystem services and biodiversity because we are talking on biodiversity day i have just emphasized on what are the ecosystem services that are provided by biodiversity and then you can have at a different level as consumption use value of the biodiversity or the ecosystem production use value of biodiversity social use value ethical use value and aesthetic use value if you read through consumption use value then you can add actually each one of you can add something which if it is missed out but these are the major things that we we get as the ecosystem services from biodiversity and biodiversity being the part of the ecosystem we get all this from the ecosystems like consumption use value food fruits vegetables harvested and consumed drugs in drugs we have the medicines antibiotics ayurveda and siddha medicines fuel firewoods fossil fuel as coal petroleum natural gas construction material productive use you have many products that we can get from biodiversity like fish food silk wool tusk paper pulp leather textile perfume fiber so on and so forth so these are the levels at which we can get these different services from biodiversity and subsequently from the ecosystems well now we come to the end as what should be the action plan and for the action plan also we all know about it but the execution is the problem 
As the global community is called to re-examine our relationship to the natural world, one thing is certain, very important. Despite all our technological advances, we are completely dependent on healthy and vibrant ecosystems for our water, food, medicine, clothes, fuel, shelter, energy, just to name a few. We already have in the previous slide talked about it. The theme, our solutions are in nature, emphasizes hope, solidarity, and the importance of working together at all levels to build a future of life in harmony with nature. These are very flashy words, but then execution, the action and the execution of the plan, that is what is very important. Otherwise, these words have no meaning that we solidarity and importance working together with nature and this and that. What we need to do is the action plan, draw action plan and execute it. What can be our action plan? We need to have a holistic approach. And for the action plan also, I can, I can appeal to each one of you. You can go on adding in these actions what we can take for conserving our biodiversity or for as per the theme, finding the solutions to our problems in nature. Identify locations of critical wildlife habitat, conserve sacred groves, eradicate and control introduced weeds, leave native species undisturbed, suitable tree planting, endemic plants must be planted, maintain wetlands, mapping of water bodies, desilting, reduce pollution, use natural products, awareness and education. That is what I think we are doing now by att you attending this lecture and I'm speaking to you something about biodiversity. Documentation of biodiversity, enhancing quality of soil, air, water, and other natural resources. Conservation of habitat, recycle, reuse, and uh, reduce solid waste management, and donations. These are all sorts of action plans that can be executed. Well, when, when we talk about these action plans, uh, we also need to understand what we are facing today. I will just conclude in a few minutes, three, four minutes. Divers, drivers of zoonotic diseases, that is infectious diseases that can naturally be transmitted from animals to humans, are changes in the environment, usually the result of human development or climate change. And climate change is because of the human development and the activities of human beings. Altered habitat can yield less food, sending foraging wildlife into contact with nearby humans creating vectors for zoonotic bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Well, I did not, even I did not know that there is something like World Zoonosis Day, which is observed every year on 6th July to create awareness. I just came to know when I was preparing for this particular presentation. Zoonotic origin of several diseases. Human-induced environmental changes modify wildlife population structure very important, I repeat, human-induced environmental changes modify wildlife population structure and reduce biodiversity. It affects negatively the biodiversity, resulting in new environmental conditions that favor particular hosts, vectors, or pathogens. Because the foraging area for those animals and, uh, are changed and they are going to come more closer to the human beings. Well, that is all what I had to say. Let us all think about the action and execute, as I said earlier. Make sure we are moving in the right direction. And uh, uh, well, I will be welcoming the questions, if at all any, uh, because it was a very simple presentation. But still, if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. If